Hi, I'm Don, and this is The Hobbyist Geek. And today we got something very special. I have the Ghostbusters Ecto-1 Special Edition. And in this one, we're going to be building the Proton Packs and the Ghost Trap. Now, I actually have all of the pieces for all four Proton Packs and the Ghost Trap right here. I understand that uh, my brethren over in the UK get them in separate shipments, but here in the US we get them in one. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, cover all this today. And we've got our parts, we've got our magazine, so let's get right on it. All right, I'm going to cover the parts a little differently this time around because each pack is individually packaged and uh, that goes for the ghost trap as well. So we're going to go ahead and throw the splash screen up. There it is. That shows all of the pieces that you get with these with this particular pack. And um, there are a lot of pieces. So rather than going through each one individually, uh, I'll let you take a look at this splash screen here. And uh, you can always read the descriptions and the instructions should you decide to get this. And we'll go through each piece as we build uh, the individual items. So let's go ahead and get started by building one of the proton packs. All right, to begin, uh, we're gonna take the proton pack body here um, and just look at the detail on that. Man, that is incredible. I don't know if that actually says anything. Um, my eyes are just not good enough to see, but it certainly looks like there's writing on there. Uh, down here as well, there seems to be some writing. Um, and, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, the bumper here and we are going to uh, attach it right there, just like so. Um, there is, if you look on this side, a little peg right there, and that's gonna go in that hole right there to make sure it stays nice and aligned, and we're gonna attach it with an HP screw. All right, take a look at that. Now we're going to assemble the ion arm. So we're gonna get the ion arm front and the rear. I'm gonna throw those together. I uh, don't know exactly what the ion arm is, so let's see if we can find it. <clears throat> I believe this is the ion arm rear, and this is, yeah, the ion arm front. And it's gonna slide in just like that. Bear in mind, uh, if you're looking at the rear, the uh, curved areas are going to be facing out to make that into a tube. And it will just fit right in, just like that. And we will attach that with two EP screws. Okay. Now with that attached like that, we can attach it to the proton pack body. And it would appear, uh, if you have the circular part facing upwards. This will go in just like this. And it will screw into these two screw bases. Ah, there's a slot right here. So this will slide right in just like that. And it'll screw into those two bases with two more EP screws. Look at that. Definitely looking awesome. All right, now we're going to attach the uh, vacuum pump and the hose. Okay, so here is the vacuum pump. And I believe this is the vacuum hose. And if you look very closely, uh, it's really hard to see on this, but this is a, a ridged material, so this is not smooth like the other hoses. All right, and that is gonna go right into there. And push that in as far as you can. Okay, and then it's gonna go on the vacuum pump body here. And it's gonna come in just like this. 
with the other end of the hose weaving around and it's going to go in here. Okay, you can pump that, uh, push that through uh, as best you can. And this right here will get attached on the bottom with an HP screw. I want to make uh, something clear. This is very, very fragile, okay? A lot of these pieces are. So while you are handling this, please be very gentle in how you manipulate it because it will snap if you are not careful. I think that's in as bad as good as it's gonna get. Now we've got to assemble the particle thrower. So we're gonna take this awesome piece of machinery right here. And the first thing we're gonna do is uh, put the uh, rear plate on. So we're gonna take this, this rear plate. Uh, and we are going to assemble it, looks like that, yeah, just like that. Now if you take a look at the back of this, there is a post right there, and that post is going to go right there, right in there, okay, and the screw is going to line up with that base. So just like that, and we're gonna use another HP screw. All right, now we're gonna take the Clippard Mimatic, excuse me, Minimatic Modular Valve. It's gonna be this puppy. It's gonna be this thing right here. And that is going to go in to that hole right there. Slide that thing in, no screws for this one. There we go. Uh, that is, at least for me, a little looser than I would hope. I uh, may have to glue that in. Again, take a look at that detail though. Look, look at the writing and whatnot. Uh, this is, this is looking actually really, really, really nice. All right, uh, now we're gonna take a short black hose and we're going to attach it to the two pins. It would be this pin here and this pin here. Okay. And there we go. The hose is now attached at both ends. A um, little longer than one could hope for. And this is another one of those instances where I think uh, you may have to snip the hoses a little bit to make it the size we want. Uh, but as per the manufacturer, this is what it comes with. Now we get to start working on the hoses for this. So, first up, we're gonna take a long red hose. And it would be one of these. And we are going to attach it uh, near the bottom and the middle. So, if you look really closely, right in here, there are two pins. You're gonna to wanna to start with the bottom one, and that's gonna to come to these two pins, the one on the right. Okay, I think we finally got that one on. That was hard, especially uh, these little ones in the middle where it's hard to get into. But uh, we got it in there, we got it in there. So looking good, looking good. Uh, next we're gonna take uh, one of the long black hoses. We're gonna 
going to throw that puppy in. That would be this long black hose. And it's going to connect here on the left pin on the bottom to here. Uh, this pin sticking up here in the middle. All right, there's the uh, black hose. And getting these hoses in is an absolute nightmare, I gotta tell you. Um, they just do not want to go in without destroying the ends and going through a, a bunch of hardship. Uh, so if anyone has an easier way of getting these things in, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I've tried using the tips of these uh, uh, needle nose tweezers here to widen the hole a little bit, um, but it's still quite difficult. Uh, the final one is, uh, the final hose that we're gonna be doing right this minute is the other red hose. And that is going to plug in with this pin and then the other pin right there in the middle. Okay, we're gonna go with this. Um, that was that was a nightmare, and we are not even remotely close to getting all the hoses in yet. <laughs> so now we're gonna have to take the long blue hose, uh, and I am not at all sure where this is gonna go. Let's see here. Ah. Okay, long blue hose is going to go from this peg to this peg. Uh, and it's going to wrap around this way. So, fingers crossed, this one will be a little easier than the others. Alright. Finally got the blue one on here. Uh, I. I kind of want to glue them. I'm afraid these things are going to pop off, but it's possible that there will be modifications or something and I can replace these with something that uh, looks and feels a little better later. So I'm, I'm hesitant to do that now. I did find out that if you use a toothpick to kind of widen the holes a little bit, it makes it a little bit easier. Not terribly much, but a little bit easier. Um, but uh, this is... This is what we've got thus far. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on a little bit. And it looks like we've got two more hoses. We're gonna need to go uh, between these posts here and these posts here. They're basically gonna be straight line ones. Um, the uh, blue, then the blue hose is going to go on the bottom with the red hose on top. All right, uh, now we've got these on there. And using the toothpick method, it really did make that go on a lot smoother. Uh, looks like uh, we are moving on to the completion of these proton packs. And we're going to start by taking the particle thrower here and we've got this uh, pipe and it's gonna go into ah there it's gonna go right in to that hole there just the end of it it's supposed to go in this is a spring. This, this pipe is actually just a spring. And throw that puppy in there. So we're gonna cover it with the back of the proton pack. So basically, we're going to slide this thing in, and right here where that hole is, we're going to 
stick this in and allow this to go in and hold it in place. Okay. Just like that. And we're going to use four HP screws to tie it all together. And now we take the uh, Alice AE1, what is this? Uh, Alice uh, LC1 uh, pack frame. We're going to attach this to the body. And if you take a look, there's a little post there. It's going to go up there. So we go like this. And two more HP screws to tie it all together. And there you have it. One proton pack completed and ready to go. Uh, not happy with the fact that the uh, particle thrower here doesn't seem to attach in any way uh, to the pack itself. I know they were worn on their backs in this angle and uh, the particle thrower was on the right side. So you would think it would go here somewhere but there is nothing on the frame uh, to attach it. So, not sure how it's gonna be displayed once the uh, uh, rest of the car comes in and we get the, uh, the, the stretcher to put this on. But uh, for now, there we go. One proton pack completed. Three more of these to go. <laughs> Wish me luck. And through the magic of editing, we now have four completed proton packs. I will say the use of a toothpick to widen the holes on those hoses made life so much easier with the follow-up packs. So uh, highly recommended, highly, highly, highly recommended. As for the proton packs themselves, uh, they they are quite beautiful. There are some details that are missing. Um, there's no ribbon cable. Um, you know, these do look like they're you know factory. No no weathering of any kind. Though I'm sure a lot of people are going to do that. And no mount for the particle thrower, which that's the part that bugs me the most. It really really does. But other than that, uh, these are quite nice. Now we can move on. To the ghost trap. Now the ghost trap I expect will be quite a bit simpler. So we're going to start by taking uh, this piece right here, which is uh, uh, going to be the ghost trap body. And unfortunately, uh, I, I find this to be very, very unfortunate. Uh, they want us to apply a sticker. So let's pull that puppy out here. Yeah. A sticker. Now, these uh, Eagle Moss builds, they generally don't have stickers. But uh, I guess for the extra, this is, this is what we're going to have to do. So the sticker is going to be applied basically like this. I'm going to use some tweezers to get this on as, uh, as neatly as I can. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the, the sticker on here, and frankly, I'm not, I, I don't like this at all. I, I really don't. There was some nice molded detail underneath this that uh, showed the, uh, the, the two trap doors. And with this single sticker here, you lose that, that molded detail that's in there. So this, this is, I'm very unhappy with this. Uh, hopefully the mod community takes note and we go ahead and uh, get this resolved at a later date. But for now, that is where we are. Next step is to take the long handle here and there's a little pin on the shorter end and that'll go right in there. Uh, be 
careful not to snap that pin. This is a very tight fit. There it goes. Okay, and it's all nice and popped in there. And then we're gonna take what they call the bar graph. That's this piece here. And it's got a little tab here and it'll go into that slot right there. Just like so. Let me push that in. So there is uh, the completed top of the ghost trap. Now we're gonna take the vacuum hose. That is a very long vacuum hose. This is a, a, another spring. And it's gonna be held in place right in there with uh, the, <coughs> excuse me. It's gonna be held in place with the ghost trap base. Ghost trap base. Okay, they've even got molded wheels in there. Uh, and the base is going to go on just like this. Uh, the hose will be held in place much the same way as it was on the proton packs, just like that. And we're going to attach it with two IP screws. Okay, there we go completed ghost trap now we got to build the pedal so uh, we're gonna take uh, the pedal housing um, let's see I believe this is the pedal housing and we're gonna take the RT box this thing I think really hard to see on this clear plastic but there's a little tiny tab that's right there and that's going to go in that little slot in the silver part with uh, the screw hole uh, well with the screw holes lining up and that's going to be attached with a BP screw okay Getting this piece lined up just right with that tiny little tab and little screw hole is difficult, to say the least. Uh, what's more is, if you look closely, you can actually see the screw coming up through the center there, which kind of breaks you know, the illusion a little bit, but I think we're good. I mean, the model of this size should be fine. Uh, next up, we want to take uh, the pedal vector plate, I believe. That would be this thing and you're gonna have a little tab there a little post I should say and that's gonna go in that hole whereas the big screw base will line up with that okay just like that and we'll flip this over and we're going to get a uh, uh, the pedal housing, excuse me, uh, the pedal base, and that's gonna go in just like this. Let's see, and it looks like the ho other end of the hose is gonna come out of this little hole right there. So, you've got a bunch of pieces that are not tied together that you gotta manipulate here to try and get it all together. See if I can do this on camera. There we go. I think that about covers it. And then we're going to use an IP screw to go right through there and tie it all together. And there you have it, everyone. You've got one ghost trap, one pedal plate, and a rather lengthy vacuum hose. Uh, the spring is making things difficult as far as 
keeping things aligned and upright. There we go. A little twisting and turning and you can get it. Uh, I don't know how this is all gonna store on the, on the stretcher, on the gurney that's, that we're gonna get, but that is it. And there we have it. That is the end of the Ghostbusters Ecto-1 Eagle Moss Build Special Edition with the four proton packs and the ghost trap. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with these. I think there are areas where some more detail could have been uh, put in. But overall, I think these are really, really good replicas. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them in the vehicle and on the gurney. Uh, if you like the video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And... We'll call it a day. Have a good one.